Hey, what is going on guys? Rudalinel here, coming back at you with some more Python code, and today I am extremely excited because we are finally going to be jumping into one of my favorite modules because it inspires a little bit of creativity. Now, um, there were, there were three kind of core modules that I'm really excited about. There's, uh, end curses, which is all about, like, curses and controlling the terminal and the command line for, like, screen manipulation, um, putting pixels wherever the heck you want them to go, um, manipulating color and sort of creating this ASCII world and environment all inside the, the shell, inside the console. And that's really cool, and that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. But I was also excited about Pi game and 2D game development and even GTK and, like, windowing systems and that sort of thing. But, hey, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'm just way too excited here. But finally, we are jumping into curses and end curses and whatever the heck you want to call them. I'm going to call them curses, but... But in Python, there is a module already set up to let you use this um, th this library. It's called Curses, obviously. In C++ or maybe PHP, I don't even know. At least I I'm more acquainted with it in C++. You would be just using, like, uh, end curses. You would probably do, like, a typical include header and be like ncurses.h and that sort of thing. So end curses is really what you're looking at. But it's a library for manipulating the screen inside the console. It's like, if you had the shell open and you were playing Zork, I mean, you can do that. Or if you were playing, like, dot .hack, not so much dot .hack, but hacked um, some, from some, like, BSD games or something, these roguelike adventure games, that's kind of what you're doing. You're just manipulating the terminal screen, and you're playing, like, an ASCII game. It's, it's really kind of fun and really kind of cool, and I have a lot of fun with it. I, I really love this style of art. <laughs> and that, that sounds weird, but uh, hey, I'm... I'm just fanboying, don't mind me. But okay, what I'm going to teach you in Python is a mixture of the C++ version of end curses and the Python version of curses because I don't want to strict I don't want to strictly teach you curses that you would see in Python because that's not cross-platform because I kind of want to advocate for using cross-platform software, that's why I use GTK and Pygame and what I'm going to introduce to you now as UniCurses. And UniCurses is a lot is the module that is universal, hence Uni in curses. And Python has that. It allows curses to run on, um, let's see, Windows, Mac, and all the other crap, Linux, blah blah blah. So okay, it's UniCurses. So I'm going to fire up Google in my web browser, and if we typed in Unicurses, you can see our first result is Unicurses for Python. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to load that page up. You can see there's a download link right there. So this is the package that we want. If I go over there, I download it. All right, it's going to start downloading. Good, good, good. I'll be patient, because, I mean, I'm a good person and all that. Now I get this um, Unicurses zip file. Right, let's open that up. And you can see, there it is in my downloads. And now, inside the Archive Manager, there's Unicurses. I'm going to go ahead and extract this. I'll bring it to my uh, to my desktop, or at least my home folder, because I'm on Linux right now. If you're on Linux, I'm sorry, if you're on Windows, you're going to want to do this exact same thing. Download the zip file, and get a shell open. Get your command line ready to roll. So, once you are in the directory that you saved all this in, you can f navigate to it and just change directory into the Unicurses archive that you just got. And inside that folder... It should be, uh, there should be a setup.python file. Now, if you're trying to install a library, whether or not it be in Linux or on Windows, typically this is the program that you're going to want to run. So, I've already have Python set up in my path because I'm on Linux. If you're on Windows, you'll probably have the setup if you know what you're doing. But anyway, Python, and then we're going to run the setup program. Um, and we're going to want to install. Okay, I'm going to need to be root here sudo python setup install, run all this, blah blah blah, it runs it and now it's created. Awesome! You can do this on Windows, you can do this on whatever platform you're using, but we've got Unicursus set up. Okay, I'm going to close out of this now, or at least I'm going to move it out of the way, so we can look at some code. And I'll get the browser out of the way, and now if I were to go into um, our editor, and if I typed import Unicurses, actually I'll include everything from Unicurses, from Unicurses, import everything. If I actually run this, I have this saved as curse01.python, so I'm going to get my shell open so we can see it. If I um, run python 
curse O1 Python. Nothing happens because there's nothing in the code that was going to run or do anything, but we've successfully imported unit curses. There were no errors. So we're in a good spot here. All right. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the unit curses um, library a little bit more. So if I go into unit curses, uh, you can see there's documentation, and that's what we want. So I'm going to go into docs, and um, I'm actually going to open this up in the explorer so I can see what we're doing here in a graphical environment. Where is this? Unit curses. Okay, I don't have this on screen right now for you guys yet, but I'm going to open up the readme. It's opening up in LibreOffice for me. I don't just know how much of this you can see. Untitled is right here. Okay. So, here's information on unit curses, blah, 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 blah. Reading all about it. Now, if you're on Windows, you're going to be looking at um, public domain curses. Because that's the wrapping that unit curses uses to actually create the end curses effect. Because there isn't an end curses binding for Windows either. It's set up by public domain curses, like an open source version of it. So if you read through this, you'll have all the information there. You just kind of have to download the DLL, find it online. And setting it up on Windows is a lot harder than setting it up on Linux, as it is with just about everything. Because you should really kind of question your sanity and manhood if you're running Windows, but blah, blah, blah. All right, that's all installed. We can import it just like we did here. And now we can actually start to write some code. Okay, using Unicurses, that's going to get into what I'm going to start talking about. So I'll hide all that crap, and we'll start to display it. Okay, in my main function, I'm going to want to initialize unicurses, or curses, or ncurses, or whatever you want to call it. So, let's go. The way this is done in unicurses, in fact, it's mandatory that it's done this way, you have to set it up with a very specific syntax. There has to be a certain amount of white space characters, there has to be the correct spelling, obviously, of the function names, there has to be a certain variable name, and there cannot be any semicolons. So, the way that I typically write a uh, Python language with a semicolon, I can't really do that for this line. But okay, if I were to type in standard screen, or stdscr, is going to equal init screen or i n i t s c r. And that's a function call, remember? So we have to use our parentheses. And I can't use an o I can't use a trailing semicolon here. That's all it takes. That's what starts up the screen. That's what initializes n curses. Now n curses runs in an entirely different mode. In a in a it creates a different sort of environment for your terminal. So we have to break out of that when we're done, when we're completely finished with our program. So what we do is we run a function called endwin, or endwindow, or whatever you'd like to think of it. Now I can use a colon here or whatever I want to do for my Python programming style, but there, it's done. It, that works perfectly fine. Okay, now if I bring down my shell, and if I were to run Python curse 01.python, if I run this, I get this, like, blank setup all over here. Okay, so the shell has ran, it, it created curses, it, it ran the um, screen manipulation library and it initialized everything the way it was supposed to, and then it closed right out of there. Okay, awesome. That's exactly what we want. So, let's try and uh, keep this here for a little bit longer, though. Let's actually just, I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead of the gun here, I'm gonna jump the shark, and, um, show you guys a function called getch, or get character. If I run that, and then I run our script, it's going to wait for my input. You can see my blinking cursor up here, and I have to press one single key, and then it will break out of the program. You can see there's my prompt right back down there. Now, if I were to set it up, if I were to accidentally have a typo or a syntax error in this, uh, in this, and in, inside the ncurses sort of body, because what we're working with inside ncurses has to be in between the initialize screen function and the endwin function. If I screw up, if there's a syntax error, if there's a logic error or anything, there's going to be a problem, and we're not going to have our screen back. And let's try and run this. You can see up here, trace back, oh, file curses, blah, it's like vomit inducing, you know? You, your error message is all over the place. You can't actually type anything anymore inside your prompt. So what you're going to have to do is, if you're on Linux, you can type in reset, hit enter. You're not going to be able to see what you type, so make sure your, your prompt is entirely empty. Run that. It's going to give you your prompt back, and you can actually start to type things again. And then we're going to run it, our code, hopefully, once we've fixed it. So, if I do this and run it again, 
now it works perfectly, and I get my prompt back, if I get my shell back the way that I wanted to have it. It's not, it's not a mess anymore. It's, it's perfectly clear and easy to use. So, let's go ahead and actually make this what we want it to be. I wanted to just give you guys a really simple Hello World program, you know? We're excited about using curses, so we're gonna jump back into tradition. Sorry, jump back into tradition. Oh, <laughs> say that five times fast. And we're gonna display Hello World. Very, very easy. Okay, so, now I'm gonna introduce the function to you guys called addString, or A-D-D-S-T-R. That's a function, call remember, and we're going to pass in a string variable here. I'm going to type in, hello world, and that's all I need. Now, add string by default will use the standard screen as to where it is displaying this text. The string is being added to the screen at the current position of the cursor. And the cursor is something that we're going to get into very, very soon. But for now, as you, as you guys saw when we first ran the program, if I comment this out and I don't run it yet, if I show you, you can see our cursor, my cursor anyway, is right up here at the top left and uh, top left corner of the screen at position 00. zero. Now, that is where the Hello World program, or that Hello World, sorry, text, is going to be displayed, because that's where the cursor is in the NCurses program. Let's run this. I'll uncomment the code, and I'll go ahead and run curse01.python. If I click, if I, sorry, if I hit enter, you can see right up here, hello world, it displayed it to our standard screen, the screen at the, the bottom or the topmost layer, however you want to think of it, or at least the one with the most authority compared to all the other windows that we might be creating later on. That's another big deal in NCurses. And it's displaying hello world. You can see our cursor is still right over there. It's, it's following immediately after the hello world text and it's waiting for more input. So there, all we did was manipulate the console. It's displaying Hello World exactly where we wanted it to, because for now we're just kind of displaying on the screen at the default position, and boom, we're manipulating the shell in a different way, because we don't have the prompt like we used to. We have it in a setup screen manipulation program so we can determine at any position in the shell, at any pixel place on the grid. We can use any color that we want. And that's really, really exciting. It opens up so many more possibilities, and we have so much more opportunity with creating art, or maybe games, or freaking anything, anything you want, inside the shell or inside the command line. So, boom! <laughs> there it is, guys. There is the introduction to end curses that I wanted to give you. We are going to be using the UniCurses module because that's cross-platform. You can run it on Windows, you can run it on Linux, you can run it on Mac, and that's awesome, man! How are you not jumping up and down like I am? <laughs> Alright, I've talked too much for this video. Um, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Talk to you guys later.